better because that breeze stopped. What is going on guys, welcome back to the free trading game collection challenge, the series where I look to build a video game collection without spending any money on it. That's exactly what we've done with regards to that collection. Not one penny spent on any of those games. How we manage to do that is we go out and buy bundles of games, a console and some games, or just a console or whatever it may be, and we sell part of what we pick up to make the money back. In some cases we make a profit, and then whatever's left over we either put into the collection or... I like to take things into CEX, get credit, and then pick up the games that we actually want. We will hopefully start doing that again very, very soon, but for the time being, in this episode in particular, we are going to spend some of that profit that we've made along the way. I did mention that sometimes we sell things to make the money back. Well, every time we sell things to make the money back, but sometimes we make a profit. Well, it's time to spend some of that profit. Once a week, or maybe a little bit more frequently these days, I like to go out and spend between... 5 and 15 pounds in generally in CEX, but I'm not against going elsewhere. And in today's episode, we go into CEX, but we also go to the car boot sale, which is basically like a, a yard sale, I guess, in America, where a lot of people gather in a field and sell things out of the back of their car. It's a little bit... Is it glamorous? It's not more glamorous than I'm making out. It's basically what I just said. But uh, yeah, we've got two different places we're going to pick up from today. I think I'm only spending 10 pounds, but we do pick up three games on three different platforms. And without any further ado, let's get into the first game. So I'm going to go to the CEX pickup first. There are a lot of games in CEX under £5. And you can easily build a sizable collection by only spending between £5 and £10 every few weeks or every, every week or whatever it may be. Even if you go in there with credit and you manage to find a game or two in a boot sale or at a charity shop or whatever it may be, you go in there and trade it in and you get this £10-£20. You can build a really nice, sizable physical collection with all of the cheaper games that CEX have to offer. And this one is one of those games that is available on the Xbox Game Pass. I, I'm pretty sure it, it went on offer even on PlayStation recently. So it's a game that you can probably have digitally quite cheap at some way or another. But I really like the the idea of it. I've played it a little bit when it did when I had Origin. Premiere Access or whatever it was called on the PC. I downloaded this and I played it for a little bit I kind of half enjoyed it, but I didn't really have time to play it at the time. So that is gonna be Star Wars Squadrons now I like like that like I said I like the idea of this it kind of takes me back to the whole It's not pod racers obviously, but it does take me back to that style of Star Wars game on the N64 Where you don't ever really leave your vehicle you are always in a vehicle of some description And I'm I'm a big fan of just flying around space I'm not a huge fan of the Star Wars universe and and everything but you know I've seen all of the older you know the original uh, two trilogies I haven't seen any of the newer stuff but uh, this, I mean, I'm guessing this is based on the newer stuff. But I, I just like the look of it. And, and I think, you know, having played it for about an hour, I can get a general gist of it to the, thing, to the point where I'm, I'm probably willing to go through it and play a little bit of it here and there. And I think it is something you could probably just jump into for like 20 minutes, half an hour, every now and again, and get a little bit of enjoyment out of. That was £5. And I think that's well worth five quid. I really do. I think it's one of those games that I will be happy to just sort of dip in and out of every now and again and not to care too much about the story. Obviously, if you're a Star Wars fan and you have played this, let me know what you think of it. A lot of people give it uh, bad reviews. Some people say that it's good. So let me know what you think. It is uh, PlayStation VR compatible, but it's not required, which is good because we don't have one of those yet. Eh? There are no plans to get one. Uh, I actually want an Oculus before I get a uh, PSVR, but there we are. So, then we go into the boot sale. Now, this was really awkward, that this was the week that my memory card decided that it was just going to die. So, unfortunately, my memory card decided to die at this point. So, I had to use my phone. That's why the angle is weird. Although, to be fair, it probably worked out better. In a lot of really good games, uh, or I say good games, games that you just don't see very often in a boot sale. I'd never seen him before at this boot sale, and he had 
about two tables full of games. He had a section of, of loose discs that were in plastic uh, cases so that you knew that they were being well looked after. He had a fair few decent games, a whole tub of PlayStation 1 games as well. I did try and record the whole thing, but of course, like I said, my memory card just decided today was the day to die. So I had to use my phone and I couldn't really record properly because he was, he was watching. So we do pick up some games from this stall, but unfortunately, I didn't catch it on camera. You're not going to be able to see this one very well, unfortunately, due to the angle, but the only game worth mentioning was The Walking Dead Survival Instinct. If that was the Wii U, we would be laughing all the way to the bank. Unfortunately, it was the 360, and it is about a £5 game. Can I interest anyone in a copy of FIFA? Doesn't matter what year it is, this doll had FIFA in abundance. Big disappointment when you see a big stack of games and they're all FIFA. It was this stall that is never at this car boot sale and he had games for days and he'd put them out into different categories so I had to record it on my phone so that's why the footage is absolutely horrendous but he had uh, quite a bit of N64 stuff, loose games. They, they weren't expensive by any stretch but there weren't really any games there that I thought well I need to pick that up because I never see it or CEX never have it etc. There are a couple of wrestling games there I think I probably should have picked up but I left them. There was nothing over value, if you will. So I think he was charging like five pound a game. There was nothing there that was worth more than six or seven. So I'm not. I wasn't too bothered. But he did have one game that I that I really wanted, and then I had to pick another game from that category. It was two for five pound. So let's pick up the one that I, I didn't. Not that I didn't really want because I actually really do like this game and I have played it. But uh, it's one of those that you can pick up nearly anywhere and it is Xbox one and that is going to be alien isolation I am a huge alien fan to the point where I thought uh, Alien uh, Covenant was actually a good film. So that uh, has to be uh, in the collection uh, in some way or another and I'm more than happy to add it on the Xbox uh, £2.50 essentially uh, was I ripped off? I mean, I think think CEX sell this for like, I don't know, four or five pound, maybe a little bit more, maybe six at most. It's not an expensive game. So I suppose I have done relatively well there in getting that for £2.50. But the real reason I picked this up, like I said, is because I wanted the two for a fiver. Uh, I don't think he was going to sell them individually. Uh, I think because he, he had them in categories, two for five, two for ten and things like that. So had to pick that up, but I don't regret it in the slightest because it is a fantastic game. Anyway, the game that I wanted, which by the way isn't actually that expensive, but it's a GameCube game and you just don't see them in the wild that often. It is WrestleMania 18. Now, it's unfortunate that... Um, oh, it is complete in box, by the way. It is unfortunate that this isn't a more desirable game. I think he had one other GameCube game there, and it was... Um, um, if it's in the footage, it's in the footage. If it isn't, I do apologise, but it might be. might have been something trash. It's just something wasn't worth picking up either way. But that is a good game. I'm a big fan of wrestling games. Uh, the older ones tend to be quite good. This, like I said, isn't expensive, but it's our first GameCube game. So originally, my first GameCube game was going to be Resident Evil, but that got cancelled by the seller for some reason. I was actually meant to pick up a whole host of GameCube stuff from a viewer. That never happened, unfortunately. So it ended up being WWE WrestleMania 18. Uh, I've played it a few times, and we also have a, a Wii, of course, that we can use uh, to play this. And we have—I I don't know if you can—I don't know if you can actually use the Wii remote, or whether you have to get a GameCube controller. Haven't actually tested this out. For all I know, this doesn't work. But the, the disc condition is very, very good. And in general, I think for for a minimal pickup, that is not bad at all. First GameCube game. I would say almost a staple on on any console, you know, for the Xbox this time. And then a game that I just like and enjoy. And, and, and that's obviously what game collecting is all about. You don't have to collect what other people expect you to collect. You don't have to collect what is in fashion or going up in price. You collect the games that you want to play, the games that you, gives you the, the sort of nostalgia and, and, and that kind of hit. And that's what that does. That's nostalgia, that is a banging game, and that's just a bit of fun. And that, and there we are. That was £10 for those three games. Uh, and we start our GameCube collection. I have absolutely no idea where that GameCube collection is going to go. Uh, I guess it's going to go down here with Nintendo-related stuff. 
don't know. I want to start picking up more Wii U games as well. Switch games, one of those really frustrating situations where they're just really expensive all the time and they very rarely come down unless they are the really cheaper digital games that you're trying to squeeze a little bit more out of in terms of a physical copy. Uh, I've got a fair few of them myself. Uh, but uh, yeah, I do really want to extend that Wii U collection. I wouldn't say as soon as possible, but I am going to actively look for some more Wii U games to go into the collection quite soon. But um, we add those to the shelf. And with that, the collection value grows. But of course, the cash value goes down by £10. So we are going to have to look to build up that cash value a little bit more. And it is it is getting very difficult for me to do this because the weather has turned all of a sudden and car boot sales now are going to be few and far between up until the end of August, I think, just because of how much it's raining all over the country. Uh, and with that, of course, the end of August brings September and that's when car boot sales start dying down. And then at the end of September, they will pretty much shut until... I don't know, April again, which is going to be harsh times. Uh, charity shops now think that they're like fancy boutiques and they don't really sell things cheap anymore. So I'm going to have to rely on Vinted and Facebook Marketplace. And at the moment for video games, those two places have just fallen off the grid. So it is going to be quite difficult for me to pick up deals, but I'm going to try my best. That's going to do it for this Spending the Profit episode, though. If you have enjoyed it, do me a favor and hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And until the next time, goodbye. Thank you.